cool guys welcome back uh uh, episode two of Overlanding Budget Builds Edition. Episode two of Overlanding Off Road Mini Series Part two. Part two of Part two. Overlanding. Overlanding. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. So uh once again we've got myself, Trevor, Tom, Tom Sylvester. What's up? And Tim with us today. Yep, we're back. We're doing it. Definitely not Cherokee Captain, whatever you called yourself last week. I can't remember. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, somebody put that in the comments because we've already blocked it out of our memories. Yeah. Um, so today uh, we got a little long-winded last time about kind of top dollar builds, uh, you know, what you could spend the most money Just on. so many things to talk about. Unlimited budget for overlanding builds. So today... My favorite words. Yes. We're going to try and stick to budget builds. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so hopefully everything, you know, probably realistically anything under ten thousand dollars what you can get into for a couple grand right off the bat uh, like and then with the equipment and whatnot look at what's the most affordable equipment for what's actually necessary to take with you on the trip um so we will send this one over to tim actually because his favorite thing to do is to look at budget builds and what he can do for the cheapest amount of money really cheap stuff geo tracker Cause you I was spent, just I was just watching dirt every day before yeah. I because because you spent how much on your XJ when you first bought it seven hundred dollars yep yep would have been six fifty no would no it was seven fifty it would have been seven hundred that's right yep yeah so I love I love fifty dollars battery fifty dollars for the brand new battery that had just been put in the vehicle seven years ago yeah, yeah. but this stuff <laughs> is my favorite but uh so from your perspective so just 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 to get into it yep. From, from from a vehicle's perspective, yeah, from nothing. Yep. Um, if you already have anything with all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, all you need is um, really some intuition to get out there and find the trails. Um, pack a tent, go go light. And there's tons of social media outlets that will um, never go alone. Never go alone. Yes. No, no, no. That's overlanding, the off-roading, camping, regardless. It's never like go alone. Rule number one of Fight Club is don't talk about Fight Club. Rule, rule number, number one of camping. Off-roading in general, yeah. no matter what you're doing, is don't go alone. Yep. Yeah. Really just being in the woods in general. Like, even if you're out there just, like, hunting or whatever you yeah. do, don't go alone. Yeah, we don't need a Blair Witch Project. Yeah. yeah I mean, tell, tell somebody where you're mm-hmm. going, where you're planning to be. Or right over the head. I've never seen Blair Witch. Well, didn't, wasn't that in Luckett's or, like, Maryland? Connecticut? Yeah. What was the one that was done right up here, like right across the river? There was another horror movie filmed up there, right inside Maryland. Oh, you're getting way off track there, bud. Yeah, we're way off track. Are you thinking of the Lorraine of Bobbitt down in Manassas? No, I can't remember it. It'll, it'll, anyway. it'll come to me. Anyway, back to four-wheeling, because yeah. you know, this is a the Dirt Drive podcast, not the <laughs> horror movie podcast. Which I would not do well with. No, because you can't even think <laughs> of the name of the movie. Anyway, so, the horror movie so, or the roller coaster. Speaking, <laughs> speaking to people who don't have a vehicle at all what would be your top budget vehicle to start off with like what is probably top of the line if i would well not top of the line well yeah yeah, but but for like my 10 grand pick which is not bad if you're i mean 10 grand is a little higher than some people's budgets but if you want to get in a new hobby my 10 grand pick would probably be like an older tacoma or like the what was it before the Tacoma? Really, just really oh, getting cheap. Uh, you don't want to go to the like the mm-hmm. hard the Nissan hard body or the T one hundred yeah. whatever they call it. Like probably the, the first Tacoma. Yeah. So like 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 any of the Tacomas, any of the Forerunners. Like, but those are none of those are ten grand right now. No, no, no. Are, but it, regardless of today's for, market right yeah, now, forget, today's market forget, is crazy. We're talking leave, like leave the pricing out of it a little yeah. bit and just kind of because realistically, a good starting point, a good starter yeah. overlander. You know, you, you can't go wrong with the the Forerunner Tacoma yeah. platform. Yeah, that's that's what I would go with. I yeah. think if I if I was going to sell everything I have now and get into overlanding, it would probably be a Toyota or a Gladiator. But yeah, uh, but you can't you can you can start to find the Gladiators reasonably priced like the used Toyotas. Yeah, I, I think to um, you know you have some options in that style of vehicle. Um, you know, if 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 a used Forerunner at Twenty five thousand dollars is out of your dual purpose budget. Like the Nissan Xterra is are, are relatively affordable. Uh, We've got a buddy who who wheels one out or who mildly overlands one out. Yeah, and it's and, got like two hundred eighty thousand miles or something ridiculous, and yep. it still 
t- takes away, you know, it runs great. Like we just had it in the shop, put an alternator in it and and power steering pump. And it's just it's cruising. You know, it's his daily driver, but it also gets him through the woods. Packs packs it up a little yeah. lightly in the back. You have yeah. a little tent in the back. You don't need an overland or not an overland tent, but a rooftop yeah, tent. tent. Yep. Just a like we talked about, or me yep. and Trevor talked about a few weeks ago. Just just a little tent that you can pack up, uh, set up easy. Mm-hmm. Um, something where you can just get Walmart. out there, get out there and get going. Walmart Ozark Trail. Send the check. Send the check. <laughs> but uh, yeah, because I think I think one of the you know kind of like we talked about previously with the whole cooking aspect and camping aspect. I think people have a misconception about what they need to bring versus oh, what's you, it's absolutely well, necessary. Since so we're on the topic and we're talking budget stuff here. Like I know you guys talked about the your old camp stove and the Blackstone and everything. You know when you're when you're building out this overlander if you're if you're getting into this and starting space space is space, a big one right yep. so like yeah the small camp stove works great small oh, yeah. propane bottles fantastic absolutely limits your cooking abilities but the other flip side of this is you can't fit a blackstone right like a blackstone is going to take up depending on what you have yeah. mm-hmm. you know if you're a family of four you need your back seats correct you're also on the so, road when you're overlanding too so you have the opportunity to stop it Stop at mom and pop restaurants sure. down down on Route well, Eleven. But, or, but I think the biggest other difference is with the Blackstone. The you're two. talking a massive oh, propane yeah. can that you yep. get at Home Depot or Lowe's yep. versus your two pound Coleman propane can so, so, that takes up six inches of right. space. Yeah. So, so so now you know we can talk other options, right? Like yep. Blackstone's great. You're setting up base camp. You got the space. You travel with a chef like we do. You want to have <laughs> you want to have you know steak frites. In the woods, yeah, yeah you're, you get a Blackstone. What's important to you? You're just looking to make burgers and dogs? Maybe just a grill rack that goes over a campfire. Yeah. Which we it. did talk about previously, yep. which I also yep. have. There are you, there are foldable fire oh, yeah. pits that you mm-hmm. can get. You know, A lot of people make these CNC cut sheet metal pieces that interlock, mm-hmm. become a little mini grill. Uh, super easy to store, relatively lightweight, easy to set up. Anything that you can break down or fold up is going to be your friend. Me personally, yeah. my 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 budget stove cooking setup, Scottle. Scottle's a good one. It it it's like a portable Blackstone. It yep. runs on the 20 pounds propane, so, you know, if you're out west where you have fire restrictions, you can't have an open fire. Yeah. You know, it's a great option mm-hmm. um, cuz you know that that's a big one, right? You know, yep. with with fire season, you know, you're facing thousands of dollars worth of fines if you start a campfire. Yep. Forget the risk side of it. Like, it's just not, it's not worth it. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it gets dry enough out there. When I lived out there, we used to have brush fire started by oh, yeah, truck. You lived out there. Yeah. Like, like a, a truck was dragging a chain down the highway and started three miles worth of brush fire. So like open, open flames, not an option. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that scottle, awesome. Folds up. You can do, you can cook just about anything you want with it. You know, you can do your bacon and eggs. You can do peppers and onions. You can mm-hmm. do sausage. You can do burgers. You can do a steak. Did um, you do any like overlanding style four wheeling when you lived out west? A little bit, a little bit. I had a I had a Nissan Frontier. Um, I was that was more my car phase when I was working at the car museum. Okay. So like, I, I had a really sweet old BMW autocross car um, that I towed with my Nissan Frontier. Oh nice. But I also took the Frontier out. Like, you know, lived on the on the border of Colorado and Utah and. Would hop across the LaSalle Mountains, John Brown Canyon, and go out to Moab and put around. Yeah, it's just so so convenient. Yeah, and, I mean we're not in a bad spot for it either. A, I was gonna say we we have a lot of convenient places to get to, especially right. when you're talking about overlanding. You know, rock crawling. Yeah, you could. You know, you talk about dragging. You know, towing something down the highway, and it's not nearly as fun. Yeah. But as far as overlanding is concerned, the East Coast in general has gorgeous terrain oh, yeah. to to see i mean it's yeah. definitely different than the west coast and it's definitely a little more technical but you know as far as forests and everything like that i mean yeah. just go up and down the east coast you'll never run out of things to see yeah. well even that i was, was that, planning that overland trip kind yeah. of was that kind of overlandy or virginia i would expedition? call that more overlanding than off-roading i would call that rock landing yeah i would call that rock yeah. landing nice recall to uh, last week yeah there. we did i planned and i've still got it i planned is it 700 miles something like that it was but like so, 700 miles yeah. from from bristol back up we to really winchester do that but so soon. for that for a trip like we, we that, need vehicles that function for that tom <laughs> yeah but to the to the point of the episode for that having a budget vehicle that trail that 
trip that you planned would be miserable. Would, would be miserable. miserable. <laughs> but there's well, we're plen- going to do it anyway. There's plenty of stuff that and you rock can, crawlers. You know, <laughs> if you get lucky enough to find a Tacoma or an XJ or something that's you know three grand and your budget's ten, and now you've got seven thousand more dollars to get your equipment going and all that. I mean, you're in a pretty good place. Well, um, I, I think too, you know, the 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 money aspect can can go so many different routes because if you spend nine thousand dollars on the vehicle and then a thousand dollars on gear like you're still going to set yourself up pretty well oh absolutely uh and and i think i I think that's something that gets gets lost i think the the planning factor for your build starts with budget Mm -hmm. and then the second step has to be what do you want to do with it yep do you want to do a 700 mile three day four day trip do you want to go and find the most remote, coolest thing to post on Instagram? Do you want to find the most technical trails? You know, and, and and some of that's based on where you're going, where you live. Is it a daily driver? Is it a purpose built? You know, most most people are going to have a dual purpose rig. Yep. You know, we're, you're you're that that's what makes the the forerunners and the Tacomas great because they work every day as so well as well every day. I mean, uh, they have million mile four hundred oh, yeah. yeah. Well, and I think I think a couple of years ago, I think we saw more of a divide where the quote unquote overlanders were the guys who had a ton of money. They could out correct. They could outfit their rigs because they had the twenty thirty thousand right. dollars to outfit their rigs. And I think people over the last couple of years, like you mentioned last week with COVID and everything, and people were sort of forced to take on new activities to get out of the house people realize that you can Take overland anything. affordably. You know, you don't have to have right. 25 grand in the bank to outfit a vehicle. Yeah. You can take your Tacoma, the, you know, the, drop, I mean, even, even 31s on a CRV. You can, I, well, you, even even just not the vehicle, but I mean just as far as equipment, oh, right? Yeah. Like, you know, those guys were dropping 15, 25 grand yeah, on equipment. And buy an eight thousand dollar tent to bolt to the roof. Correct. Like, but yeah. you can... I'm sure it's nice. But, you can get yeah. away with $2,500 will get you everything that you need yeah. and then some yeah. I, I, for your build. I think there's a a, a stigma around overlanding. Uh, That's it, elitist a little bit. Um, I don't want to say elitist, but like it, it's it, it's the idea that you have to spend a lot of money True. to be able to start. It's and, a lot of keeping up with the Joneses. And, and I think yeah. it, yes. I think overlanding is the one segment of off-roading that doesn't require a lot of money to get started. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, I, Basically, all you need is Four wheel drive, a little bit of ground clearance, a tent, and a tent, yeah, and, and, a, cool, and a good cooler. cooler. Yeah, because you can go out for a day. You right. Know? I think people forget that too. Is people look at overlanding and they go, "Oh, it's got to be weeks, a week yeah. or two yeah, weeks yeah, yeah. or what?" No, you can just like a camping trip, just like a hiking trip. You can go out for a single day. Yeah. There's nothing stopping you from doing that, you which see? would afford you the ability to get the little Coleman fold up grill, right? A single person tent and a chair. Yeah. A single pot, and you've got burgers in your pot, baked beans in your pot, and yeah. you're good to go. And you're so overlanding and three easy steps. Yeah, there yeah, you yeah. Go. it's it's really that simple. So when it comes to picking a rig, like I know, you're I, I'm pro bed. You're yeah, yeah. I'm oh yeah, truck, bed. truck bed is fantastic. But if I, I wasn't going to turn the Comanche into a rock crawler, I would turn it into yeah, an overlander. That would be the think, dopest overlander, right? <laughs> That'd be more of a rock lander, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Spook, are you coining that term? I, maybe. Or, is that going to be our thing? I don't know who I'm stealing it from. But I, 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 I'm, I'm I, not gonna, I tell you what, we're going to find out real quick. I'm not going to take full <laughs> credit for it, but I'm all for making it. When that cease and desist it? letter comes in the mail, we'll know real quick. Yeah. We're, we're good at taking things from Fred and Dave. Yeah. <laughs> dirt heads, dirt nerds. It, it, may, it may have been Fred and Dave. Anyway. <laughs> the, Fred, sh- Dave, let us know. Yeah, we'd, love, we'd love to have you on one day. Yeah. Uh, but when it comes to picking that rig, right, like like have your budget and then just start looking at four-wheel drive. There's so many things that came in all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive that people don't think of. Um, like the Chevy Astro van. Yeah. Oh, so cool. I've seen one of those at Rouse Creek. Yeah. And and you can buy all-wheel lift drive. kits for them. The Toyota Sienna. The Toyota Sienna. We're putting a lift kit on Monday on one at the shop. Like the ground clearance aspect can be solved Many different ways. Not just many different ways, but on just about anything. Yes. Yeah. Right? Like, like, like it, it can be done. Mm-hmm. They make so, a, a two-inch space lift from a Sonata. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why? 
For what reason? They I don't make know. a spacer lift for a Toyota Sienna. That's less surprising than the Sonata. <laughs> yeah. My 2009 Sonata that someone still manufactures. So, <laughs> so going back to choosing that rig, right? Like, get your get something that's four wheel drive. Personally, transfer case over all wheel drive, yes. just in case you do find Break. yourself down the wrong trail. All wheel drive with a center locking diff. Also great options. Again, Subarus. What's the biggest problem with all-wheel drive, though? If it breaks, you're not driving. Yeah, but you can say the same thing about transfer case. If I break the chain of my transfer case, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, but you can get underneath and switch it back into two-wheel drive. No. Are you talking about the internal case? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you you explode it. A As we learned case? with Scrappy. Yes, scrappy, true. If you, you found all the case, neutrals. You're not going anywhere. True. You got all neutrals. So, again, that goes back to the going places for what your rig is. Yes. You know, if you if you get that Subaru Outback, maybe it's not the wilderness package and you don't have full ground clearance, but you got some decent all-terrain tires in there. and You can do most of the GW National Forest. Exactly. Yep. And, 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 again, there's so many things out there. Mm-hmm. That work. Chevy Astro van. Any, really, any of the cargo vans had four wheel drive options. It doesn't. You can um, get the E series. And typically, Nate, they come with V8 engines too. Drive? Yeah, uh, I, no, his his E series is not, but it is set up as a van life camper yeah. type thing. Yeah. There's also van many life. vans that come with all wheel drive and V8 engines in them. Yep, which is um, super nice. I, I think, and that's that's really the only I think quote, requirement unquote, r- requirement. I was yeah. say rule. Yeah, um, for any off-road rig right you 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 want something that's going to have all-wheel or four-wheel drive Mm -hmm. the next biggest thing to look at is space yes how much do you need there's always a trade-off the bigger it is the harder it's going to be to wheel um you know like you you brought up the 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 crvs yeah right they're pretty cool like i said there's a there's a few of them in virginia that wheel they get little spacer lifts and 31s yep and they i mean they put rooftop tents on them because that's what people do yeah i don't know why not Cause Cause snorkels. Because we can. Snorkels and, on a Rivian. Yeah. Anything with time and money. So, like, the... Yeah, it's, it's super budget, super easy to get yep. out there and do it. Yep. And, I mean, you're unique. People take pictures of them. Yeah. So, if you, if you well, want to yeah. draw eyes... When you're the only one on the trail... With that type of vehicle... Yeah. You, yeah. You're going to draw attention, for now, sure. As much as I agree with having a bed for overlanding, I'm, I'm going to... Dry dis- cargo space. I'm going to disagree with you. Like, I think... A forerunner or an Xterra is the perfect starter. I just, I've just, you, I, think, I, think I couldn't it, imagine not having a truck with me out in the but woods. But think, think about it this way. Is so nice. Think about it this way. From a budget standpoint, true. Right. Having an enclosed cargo space yep. with a truck with a bed, you, you are having to spend extra on money a bed cap. to cap it or get a tonneau cover or something along those well, lines. I mean, but again, going back to what you want to do with it, what you're yep, building. Absolutely. You know, maybe it maybe it's just you and Mackenzie, you know, you're building an overland rig for for you and your fiance. You can put you can get a Tacoma and put the truck bed cap on it and now you have your your sleeping space. You don't need a tent. Just don't run and then a truck while you do it. Well, yeah. You could get a buddy heat or something. But <laughs> super nice. You, they you are know, super nice. Like we Jason. talked about last week. Basically inf- infinite options, right? Mm-hmm. So it, it's all about deciding what you want to do and building for that you know if you're a family of four hmm maybe maybe the extended cab tacoma with a with a cap on the back is not your best option right like you're going to run out of space real quick uh that's where the forerunner comes into play right you get the forerunner or three row uh the new the new the The new ones ones are are. but even for a family of four you're thinking you've got you know Four people, you got tons of cargo yeah. space and a rooftop tent. And it's a solid like my axle. stepdad has. It's yeah, yep. mm-hmm. still solid rear axle. Yeah, solid yep. axle. They're 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 based. On, they're either an eight inch or like an eight and a half. And they're yep. body on frame. Are yes. They still, yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Which yes. they are body huge. on frame. Yep. Yep. So they're, they're, they're the only. I guess no. The Suburbans aren't doing that anymore. They're the last body on frame, <sighs> full size SUV, because yeah. they're IFS IRS for the um, Suburbans. But I think it's still. I think it's still a frame. It's just, the IRS is what's new. I, I can think. tell you what the Suburban is definitely not budget friendly. No, no. that thing is seventy five thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, buy the Rivian at that point. Yeah, yeah. seriously. Um, <laughs> back to the Rivian. Yeah, so full circle Rivian, please. please but I, please, I agree please. with him. I think send the I, check. I think from a budget no, standpoint, send, send the truck yeah. and the check. I don't know. No, no, I, keep the check. Send the truck. Yeah, I think I think from a budget standpoint, I 
I would prefer to go with an enclosed space. Just yes. not to Yes, you may get lucky, you may find one that's already got a cover on it or a bed cap or whatever, but I think you're gonna have more luck finding something that's enclosed, you know, an SUV that is just as capable yeah. as a Tacoma so, or a Frontier or something like that. I'll ask the question though. You say truck bed, why? What is your use for the truck bed that makes it an important factor in picking that rig? I like all of the storage and you can get retractable tonneau covers that keep it watertight. Um and you have access to everything in the open when you need it. Uh, now, with, are you with going the two with door the, or four door? Because four that's because that's going to change things, yeah. right? Like that's going to change what you fit down potentially. Yeah. yeah. So, I do, yeah, I do. I do, I do agree. Do you can definitely get more storage out of a bed, whether it's a cap, a tonneau. Obviously, with a cap, you're going to get yeah. Tons you can get the sliders. You can get, add racks to it. You can mm-hmm. get tons and tons of space. Yep. I think, like. It's also, the way I look at it, it's also not a race. So if you upgrade over time to your vehicle, also true. Then then true. you can get going. And if but you, you get going with the same equipment, it. but you have better odds in the future for upgrading if you have that more, but that's, more space. Like I mean, a bed. you can you can say that about anything, right? I mean, I think I think the really the goal is what can you get right out of the gate on a budget. We could we can make the argument all day long. Yeah. Hey, ten years from now, I will have done this, this, and this because you save up your money over time. We're talking someone wants to go out a month from now and they found a Tacoma, you know, for three grand, right? That'd be nice. That's, buy it because that's buy, a steal. Yeah, buy it. Even, <laughs> if, even if it's got a rusty frame. Beyond, beyond that, we can fix like that. that. that is your budget build right there, right? Because right out of the gate, you've got a vehicle. So long as it's four-wheel drive, obviously, you know, you can start overlanding with that. And you hit Walmart, you buy your $150 dollar tent. Send the check. Know, send the check. Um <laughs> You buy a chair. You I buy think we a- found our cash phrase. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. We're, 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 Ozark Tra- it, one day it's going to be Dirt Drive Podcast presented by Ozark Trail. Hashtags yeah. it's got in a, the check. It's got a great. <laughs> because, because, but think about it, right? Like ha- you can go into Walmart with $300 and come out with a tent, a chair, a Coleman grill, propane, and some food for two days. And you're going to need the Tacoma to fit all that stuff. Correct. But I think for, the check for a budget out. friendly thing, I mean, you're, you're talking. You know, just buy your base model. Don't don't go crazy trying to find a yeah, TRD I, I, I or the, something. The, like, well, well, that's where no, people, no, I, people really go crazy with. You can't. If, don't get me wrong. If you get lucky, and you features. find a TRD for a good price. Well, it's not even. Don't a, pass it up. Uh, yeah, but, but again, it goes back to where, what are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? Where do you want to spend your money? You know, adding, I'd rather spend adding, my money on gear. Adding a adding a locker yeah. and and changing your your differential gear ratios. That's a big expense. Yes. So, yeah, maybe if you're looking at a $5,000 base Tacoma versus a $6,000 or $7,000 TRD, that TRD is coming with a different axle ratio Correct. and a rear locker. Now you don't have to do anything with Correct. it. Correct. It's ready to go. It's, just slap, it's ready to go. Slap so, on the trail. So now, you know, that's <clears> – you should be well, – yeah, because your average gear job is $5,000. If you're adding lockers, yeah. Yeah. Especially on a Toyota, yeah. right? Like, and because those parts are are expensive. Correct. So that's so if you can get it for a thousand dollars, right off the r- gate, right? Absolutely. But that's that's where that benefit com- that cost mm-hmm. benefit analysis comes in, um, and it's again, what do you want to do with it? You know, if if you're going to do mostly quote unquote car camping, where you're going to drive down some dirt roads, set up a base camp, you want to be able to haul all your gear. Toyota Tacoma. Oh, yeah. 100%. Mm-hmm. You were actually really, I mean, you can even go as far as saying any of those mid sized trucks. Yeah. You uh, can go to, I mean, mid sized trucks, you can even go to like a CUV size if you're just sure. doing that. Well, and the CUV, the, the market, CUV is the, the biggest new car market in the country, isn't it? Mi- the mid size SUV, yeah. C, as they're calling them, CUVs. So yes. you're going to see RAV4s, more of those. your CRVs. Um, Are they doing a RAV4 TRD Pro yet? Yeah. Oh, we talked about that last week. Oh, that's right. Sorry, it was it was a long time ago. <laughs> it, w- it was all thirty five minutes. <laughs> the, uh, the the aftermarket, I don't think, will support that stuff as much as your tr- quote unquote traditional off roaders, the the forerunners, the Tacomas, the Jeeps. Um, you're seeing some of the full size truck market getting into it pretty oh, hardcore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, GMC with the AT4, Chevy with the ZR2, ah, so nice. Ford with the the uh, what is it the FX4. They've got you know you're seeing the Trail Boss packages. You're seeing all. Well, these- you saw Chevy start a lot of that with the Colorados too. 
Sure. Yeah, those Colorado packages yeah. were insane. Yeah, yeah. You got AV built the the bison mm-hmm. with the diesel. Yep. But, and those like, things are great. Yeah, and like all that stuff is is awesome. It's not as accessible. So, Correct. But the, the aftermarket is also providing support for that stuff now too. Since they Correct. started with the, with the Tacomas when and you the see Gladiators, the, when you see the mm-hmm. OEMs building this stuff, the aftermarkets are going cool. Not everybody's going to go to the dealership, spend 65K on this fully loaded off-road ready vehicle. No, they're going to take five gonna, years to build it. Right. Somebody's going to come buy the, the, the mid-level Z71 Put and want to upgrade on it. Right. Roof racks. and Because it's all there. It's all there now for everything, which is crazy. Yeah. Well, and I guess you brought up like bumpers versus like rooftop tent, stuff like that. What gear are you going for first when you're on that budget winch probably if i'm yeah if i'm going out and i'm not rock crawling i'm gonna put a winch on my vehicle yeah it gets you out of a lot of sticky situations well, but i mean like i'm talking basic necessities right like there's Mud guys terrain. that would go out and uh, spend well, the money think, on I, bumpers I, and winch I, and I, then I think, go oh crap i don't have a tent i think recovery <laughs> gear i mean yes that can include a winch but i think recovery gear is is a higher priority yes a toe strap a bubble rope something that because you know, going back to what we started with, hard and soft shackles. You don't you don't go alone, right? So a winch isn't necessarily number one priority if you have a second vehicle. Friends, friends are what you need to go four wheel. Bingo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what what are you getting first? Four wheel yeah. drive. You, all wheel drive. If you, friends. If you the don't, nice, if the you nice don't have is, friends that are ready four wheel, find some friends, ruin their lives, make them start four wheeling. Well, yeah. the, the nice thing is when you buy a Jeep, it comes with friends. Well, that too, but. Also, if you have, I guess friend- the Toyotas do too, but not as much. There's not like there's I, not like you parking just lot. really pissed off a lot of Toyota. Owners, <laughs> but there's not so there's not like fr- it's not like no, no, Friday. We, we've we've always talked Toyota about Toyota Jeep or Friday Toyota yeah, Tacoma meets. Yeah, yes, sir. You just don't go to them because you're yeah, a Jeep guy. Your Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're right. The, 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 here, here's what it comes down to: there's off road people and there are Jeep people. Yeah, yes. Jeep people are nutty, insane. Like like it's borderline cult. Yep. I love them all to death. Borderline. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if 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 we were, you know, a religious five hundred one three C, we have our own hand sign. Do, yeah, you're not wrong. <laughs> uh, there are Jeep people who are also off road people. Mm-hmm. There are Toyota people who are only Toyota people, but there's also Toyota people who are off road people. The off road community is Massive. phenomenal. Yeah. Um, don't let the handful of quote unquote crazy Jeep people who or crazy Toyota people or crazy Toyota people scare you away from it. You know, there, there's you will always find somebody willing to help you, especially if you're in a sticky situation in the woods. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's how many Facebook groups dedicated yep. to rescuing Res- people yeah. who get yeah. stuck? Yeah, you yeah go simple Facebook by themselves post. don't ever yeah. do that. But you can only you can do so much to help yourself by being prepared and mm-hmm. having that recovery gear. Yep, winches are expensive. If you're getting something, because along with winch, you're usually talking a new bumper. Yeah. Yep. Uh, well. They, yeah, make, I they make usually they make brackets for yeah, a lot of yeah, these, you, yeah. Yeah, you but there's extra expense. You, you're not just yeah, slapping correct. a lot of times if, a winch if you on want a stock. Bumper. If you want a budget winch situation, get yourself a hitch receiver mm-hmm. and get yep. the receiver mount for the winch. Carry the winch with you. It's a trade off on space, but then you do at least have something. Yep. Mm-hmm. Come alongs, um, we, I come alongs are good. I think the the simplest one, like the the requirement. Is going to be a, some sort of tow a, rope, yeah, strap, yep. rope. Um, whether it's a, whether it's a static strap, in an easily rope. accessible place. I know, cannot stress that enough. Know the yeah. know the difference between your dynamic and static yeah. tow ropes. You do not want to take a running start, yeah. on a static, <laughs> yeah, strap. You will rip, rip a bumper off. off. Uh, but, but also, don't more. try and tow with a dynamic yes. kinetic rope like a bubble rope because that's just going to end up slingshotting you and hand fell asleep. I had to move. <laughs> Man, it's, like it's a, almost like if you had a stand. I'm gonna get, we're gonna get boom mics. I'm getting a boom mic next yeah. paycheck. You're getting we're, slapped we're, uh, in the face is what you're getting. <laughs> we apologize for our amateur quality here, but we're, <laughs> yes. we're working we're on working it. We're working on it. Currently uh, on a folding table in the garage. Yeah. Yes. But I also think, along with knowing your different types of straps and knowing your different types of shackles too, you got hard shackles, soft shackles. Like yeah. they each serve everything serves a purpose, right. and having a well filled out recovery gear set is yes. essential yeah and and, and the how nice, many people have we run into that have had all the time. nothing yeah yeah and that and that's the thing you know if you're gonna get stuck or break down don't be that guy that's completely unprepared you yep. know it, 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 and make sure you know how to use what you have well yeah because like the guy with the land rover in our group that day right like yep. he brought he had extra spare parts. airlines he knew exactly what broke exactly how to yep. fix it 
we weren't down as a group. He yep. wasn't down for the day. Everybody, you know, you're able to continue on and have a good day. And that's not to say like you, there's plenty of people out there who are not going to be as technically savvy. But if you are going to get into this, you need to know what to expect. Like, don't be that person yep. who drives out there unless you're specifically going to learn from people who are teaching you. Don't be those people. But there's a lot know of good, what your rig. There's is. a lot of good resources to learn too. Yeah. Um, well, that's why there's gotta, really no excuse, YouTube, right? It's, clubs. I mean, like mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're going back to that off-road community. Somebody somewhere is willing to teach you absolutely for your safety, for your enjoyment, for all these things. You know, out, outfit that rig. Find your local club. Find what works. We know what works in this area because this is where we wheel. We know you know a winch is super helpful for where we wheel because of tight spaces. You can't always get something turned around, mm -hmm. you know, having it mounted to the, the front of your vehicle and having at least one on each vehicle is, is really helpful because then you have multiple options. Yep. You know, if you're, if you're multiple out tow points on your vehicle, right. if, if you're doing a lot of off-roading that's in big wide open areas, winch might not be as high of a priority because you can get something turned around and but pull from max the front, tracks might be pull from the rear. Max tracks is another one. I've never used max tracks successfully. But you've also That's not been you've out never in the used desert. Well, oh. it's not even a desert. It, it, uh, like they have a lot of really good uses. True. The the problem is, Did we, I think I broke it once. And, <laughs> well, you, yeah, but yeah, see, yeah, but see where ones. we wheel, it's it's better to have a secondary vehicle than to Correct. have the equipment to get yourself out. Yeah. Because, like you said, tight spaces. We're in between not only rocks but trees. Yeah. The rocks are slick because it typically rains. You've got a lot of mud. You get further south. You know, if you're on the beach a lot, mm -hmm. max tracks are going to be your best friend. Yeah. Like, they're going to you know, save your life. Yeah. Like, 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 that's. Don't be the guy who gets stuck on the beach. Yeah. yeah. Don't, sandy, don't do that. sandy, <laughs> sandy ground, mud, things where you need that weight distribution and that grip. Mm -hmm. That's where your max tracks comes in. You're stuck on some boulders. Max tracks aren't going to do anything for you. Nope. And that's, you know, that. Uh, have the right equipment, know how to use it, and know when to use it are, are big factors. Um, well, that's the thing. I think getting back to the budget-mindedness of it, a lot of that equipment costs a lot of money. It so does. If you're, if you're starting off on a budget, plan your route accordingly because that's going to help it, it, keep your cost yeah. down too. S recovery and safety gear is not stuff you want to go cheap on. No. So no. plan your budget, like you said, accordingly because if you do buy the knockoff max tracks off – eBay they or will Amazon, break. you might only get one use out of them. Send the check. They will break. <laughs> uh, and you know, same with the ropes, right? Like you, you don't, you don't want to get a cheap no. D ring, no, and, no. And, or, yeah. or, or or shackle that snaps I've, on the I've first try. Seen so many oh, yeah, AutoZone fail. Yeah. straps tr rip. Just fail. Yeah. Well, and and D rings especially because now you're talking about a safety issue too. Yeah. Yeah. If you've got a D ring that snaps under load, yep. you've got a projectile that could yeah. potentially kill somebody. And what so, do you do? So then you, you, nice you never go D ring to D ring. Correct. Correct. Never metal yeah. to metal. Yeah. That's where soft shackles come into yep. play. Correct. The, the, the nice thing is a lot of these recovery gear companies build out some really nice kits. Mm -hmm. Worn. A couple hundred bucks. Yeah. Worn uh, Bubba Rope, Voodoo Rope, Factor f uh, 55. But when it comes to that, even a couple hundred bucks. I bought the, the, the Jeep brand worn bag that comes yep. with No, stuff. but that's my I point bought, is I bought you don't have to spend thousands of dollars. Yeah. You, know, you can yeah. find a decent yeah. starter kit so the one for I, 250 bucks, yeah. and it'll have everything that you need. I've, I've had the same one that was Quadratech branded. It came with mm -hmm. a set of gloves. It came yep. with the cable safety. It came with some good straps. came with some hooks. I think it was like $85 on Quadratech's yeah. website. I mean, may have gotten – I mean, this was five years ago, but – to that point, I've gotten five years out of it, right? Yep. It's it's good quality stuff. It works. Well, over time, we've all doubled up on stuff. Oh, what, yeah. Whatever. Because you always buy spares because then yeah. you realize, ooh, if that snaps, I'm going to be yeah. screwed. So you buy a secondary one. I think – and, you know, the, the thing that's nice with getting started and overlanding, you don't need everything. No. no. Especially when you're going with other people, as Correct. you should always yeah. do. You know, if if you're if you're just running those fire roads and doing those weekend mm -hmm. campings, you know, a simple strap, a simple rope, so a w way to fasten those yep. ropes. Just don't be like Dan and hit potholes. Are are key. Have problems. The you know, getting fancy winches and yeah, sorry, there's a tractor driving by. If you can, oh, hear is that, that what that is? Yeah, it's, we're out in the country. Welcome to Lovettsville, Virginia. I go everybody. overlanding every day, man. I got to drive down a dirt road to get to my house. <laughs> dirt road. And, <laughs> I do that. Um, I won't almost say that. <laughs> <laughs> the when when you're when you're setting up your gear and your rig, 
you know, factor that in. You can you can always expand. You can always get more stuff when you need it. The the benefit to going with friends and having friends is you will always have redundancy. Yep. If everybody is prepared, you'll always have time. more than one rope, more than one strap, more than one winch, more than one snatch block, whatever it is. Um, if you can find friends that are firefighters or EMS, double benefit because yeah, they actually know how to use the equipment. And and we, we all really like gear, so we tend to have a lot of it. Yes. For and like reason. the newest stuff. Yeah. 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 Which is a problem for our yeah. budgets. But. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, recapping, four-wheel drive, make sure you can add ground clearance. Yep. Make sure you have good recovery gear, safety gear, you know, first aid kit, fire extinguishers are, are, and are key. other people. And other people. Other uh, people is the key, which is yeah. free for you. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. Well, the, you also there's also a ton of resources out there for planning a trip. Um, yes. Guide GPS has... Now, I, I was just going to get into... Man, it's like we're the same person. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, uh, yeah, Guide GPS, I had that. That's how I planned my the, the Virginia trip. It's mm-hmm. got every public access trail on it in America, Canada, and yep. Mexico, I yep. think. It's amazing. And it's yeah. $29 a year. Yeah, GI... G A I A Gaia, right? G I G G A I A. Yeah. G A I A. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's yeah. right. Yeah. And I'm, then I'm uh, look at my phone real quick. Onyx. Just, Onyx is a good resource. Onyx is another good one. Um, I, I actually send, I send like the, the interface of Onyx uh, a little bit better. It's it's easy. It's more user friendly. Uh, There's not the trails. It's harder to yeah. find the trails on the the app uh, than, yeah. than Gaia. G G A I A GPS. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice. Uh, um, also, if you're if you're a Jeep person. The Jeep Badge of Honor Trail has some trails mapped. We don't have a ton here on the East Coast, but if you're out west or going to some of the parks, that stuff is mapped. It does have. There's, there's the new one this year. It's the BFG On Trail. Yes. Or All Trail. Uh, something like that. Yeah. It's really nice. I think. Got, and then you've got Map Rica too, which yeah. is a, you know, individuals have to map those yeah, trails. Yeah, it's, it's, it's more of a crowdsource thing. So true. The accuracy, you know what. Figuring out what's public, what's private, isn't really easy on Maprika. I know Onyx makes it super easy. Yep. They have property lines marked and mm-hmm. tell you where you can and can't go. And most of them have GPS tracking too, so you can actually yes. see yeah, exactly you, where you you're can, at. Yeah, you can use it like ways. Mm-hmm. Make, it, make it really easy to plan your trip in yep. advance, where you yep. can set waypoints and marks mm-hmm. yep. on the on your device, whatever you may be using. And most yeah. of them are free or incredibly mm-hmm. inexpensive, a couple dollars. Yeah. Another another good free one that I like is called All Trails. Yes, um, All more, Trails is great. It's more for hiking, um, but yep. you're starting to see more of the mm-hmm. the ATV, off, you know, OHV type stuff on there. Um, and it's really good because, again, it's kind of crowdsourced, so you can get reviews, you can get pictures, um, you can get all kinds of information that may not be readily available. Um, Which is great for overlanding versus off-roading, like rock crawling, right? Like yeah. that's you're when you're planning out hundreds of miles potentially, you know, right. like the trip that you planned out. Yeah, you Tim. need to factor in gas stops, and food exactly. stops, and where are we going to stop tonight to camp? Things like yeah. that. And that's with your rock crawling, it's not as important. Like it's definitely yeah. helpful. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, you, know, be just, able to you see plan your weekend at. trips, and you got to think about what food you're bringing. But you know, the trails are all right there. Correct. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're typically going to a, a set of trails. Right? Mm-hmm. You know, generally, they're marked very well. Right. Generally, whether it's <laughs> AOAA, Roush, the Cove, URE. You know Moab, yep. wherever it is, those places are are very well marked. You know yep. that's not really considered, in my in my opinion, not considered overlanding. You may Ooh. go overlanding to get to that destination, yep. which is where. But those destinations are rock crawling places, especially on the East Coast. Like that's that's why they call it rock landing. Yeah. <laughs> TM hashtag, hashtag rock landing. Not sure who we Send stole that from, but we did. Please let us know so we can have you on the show. Yeah. We'd love, we'd love your opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we are going to start doing interviews, too. That'll be nice. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure who we're going to have on first, but I've got some some Ultra 4 connections that... Yeah, we'll, we'll figure but I think out. that's I think that's the beauty of the community is there's a lot of free information out there. Yep. Mm-hmm. Of, In the community itself. Yeah, right? like yeah. The, yeah. The, the, but they can help you find yeah. the good deals, right? Like, there, yep. how many times a day do we see people talking about, oh, hey, just saw this great deal online, yep. Amazon, Walmart, Target, wherever you're getting your equipment I mean, the, from the clubs that get group buys or discount yeah, codes. absolutely i know uh, you know shout out to nova jeepers you know the nova jeepers association i'm pretty sure they have a standing 10 percent discount yep. At, yep. at some retail sites mm-hmm. yeah blue mountain I, jeep alliance does as yeah. well i think off camber may have something to uh, maybe yeah that'd be but a question for greg, greg. Yeah. but it's but to the point you know when you find those larger communities 
that encompass a very large area, there are benefits that come along with it, which is not just the discounts, but the years and decades of knowledge that come with people who have not only ridden locally, but across the country. And then you find those groups like the Jersey boys, you know, that you can go somewhere else and not have to worry about like, Oh man, I got to spend extra money to go do this because I don't really know where I'm going. No, yeah. you can yeah, talk got, to those guys in those local yeah. areas that will help you budget out your trip. And we have that up north and down south through people that I've met through four wheeling. I could go yeah. down to URI and and just through the network of people that you meet when you're doing it. Just call them up; they're gonna say yes. Yep. They love yeah. doing it just as much as you do. Yep. Mm-hmm. We can go up to AOA, which you're going to in Hopefully, July. Yeah. Hopefully, Hopefully July. July. And I'll call Noel and Chris. I, if I can get yep. my paperweight running. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll call I'll call Noel or Chris, but like, hey, we're coming up. And they're like, yeah, let's go. Noel or Chris, we're Especially coming up. Especially considering so. what happened the last time we went up there, which was not very budget friendly yeah, because yeah. we wasted an entire day. Thanks, well, Bam Bam. Well, it also didn't help that we were winter wheeling in the mountains of, you know, Pocono Mountains. Like, that wasn't really that the was, best. That, that absolutely had wait. nothing to do with it is entirely on Bam Bam's shoulders. This will be another episode but i hate snow wheeling <laughs> oh it's so much fun i know you and i could argue over this for like 30 minutes which is why it has to be another episode <laughs> your locker yeah but our there, snow but... wheeling is nothing like the pacific northwest snow wheeling do you see some of the... that's powder though like yeah, and, and, and that to me we, that, are, we are getting off that topic seems here. less fun than the snow wheeling that we did i don't know the, the videos that nope. uh, dave nah, Chappelle nah, posted nah, yeah nah, no nah, they, nah, don't nah. don't get me wrong uh, again build your rig to what you're gonna do that episode of Dirt Every Day, they built that thing specifically to go snow wheeling. That was awesome. Right. It is awesome. Once. Not what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, no. I hate it. And it's also like And uh, I like snow. I don't know how budget friendly necessarily that's gonna be. No. Not not exactly. No, and, and, and we use that term loosely. Yes. None of this yeah. is really budget friendly. True. Budget friendly was sit at home on the couch and yeah. do nothing. I think yeah. it, it, you know. The, bu- the budget for, is a perspective, right? To, like to it's, save, it's all subjective yeah. stuff. Each person's going to have a different one. You don't have to blow the walls out to it, do anything. No. Yeah, no. you can. In, in my by opinion, all means. in my opinion, to safely and comfortably get into overlanding, including the cost of the vehicle, you're going to spend fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. Yep. And I, and I think for a decent vehicle, could it be done? Well, I think for a fully outfitted decent. No, no, vehicle. not not fully outfitted. Just something that is comfortable and reliable. Yeah. Right. Like. You can go cheaper. You can buy that thousand dollar Grand Cherokee, or that's there's there's an O one like up the road here for sale for seven hundred bucks. It Whoa. quote unquote needs. You tell us that we need to buy that. Yeah, I, I thought about it. Well, it, how it, about that? It, the, it has a radiator leak and it no longer runs, which means it's probably a head gasket, so it's really not worth the time. It's also got like two hundred twenty thousand miles on it. But, but that J ten though. That uh, yeah, we'll talk about that later. That was nice. Um, that was cool. You you can get that super budget vehicle and you can go with a camping chair and a sleeping bag yep yep and you can go for are you, you go gonna, across the country yeah are you going to be as happy and comfortable as the guy who just bought the nice 2015 forerunner with forty thousand miles on it no but it's all about upgrade you upgrade eventually over time yeah. so as you well you yeah, just got to build into it that's the beauty of setting your budget right is yeah. you know down the road in five years this is what i want this is how i well, have to budget for that but you're, you're also gonna you're also gonna "Quote unquote, pay a price, right? Correct. Right. You're gonna buy you're gonna that. Thousand, you're gonna you're gonna suffer one. You're gonna deal with breakdowns. You're gonna deal with extra maintenance. Yep. You're gonna deal with other costs. The cost of upgrading. So, and, and and again, that comes down to what are you doing with it? If you're if you're buying, if you if, if you're buying something that is gonna be strictly your overlanding rig, like you only drive it on these trips. Yeah, maybe getting something cheap and putting your full ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollar budget into upgrading it is worth it but most people don't do that like we talked about mm-hmm. you're if, a lot if, of daily drivers yeah if you have to drive Especially something in this area. every day and take it out on the weekends don't skimp on the vehicle yeah you know you can you can add the gear later you can upgrade it you can get tires you can get the bigger tires or the more aggressive tires where can when you where can you get tires. those tom anywhere or you it <laughs> Jesus Christ that was I was fishing for that one come on man I was gonna say on your website but, okay. is your website gonna be up by then no we're not we're, uh, we're not doing wheels and tires on the website it's, but everything else yeah I mean wheels and tires fluctuate too much and there's so many options out there you yeah. can't encapsulate yeah the I was fishing for that one man for, come on for, I know we're, for, sep- we're separate entities on the podcast for, for thing, the shop. no for for things like wheels and tires you know go see go see your local shop you know I we I, I get not everybody's in northern virginia listening to this if you're in northern virginia 
come on by the shop, Dirt Nerds Motors, Sterling, Virginia. Give us give us a shout. So, we, so many names with dirt in it. <laughs> we, we will. It will. It's like a theme. We, it's almost like we play in the dirt. Talk, talk to your local it's clubs. Like a talk to the people. Talk to the people <laughs> that you wheel with. Find the shop that knows the area and and figure out what what's going to work best. You know, like around here for over, for overlanding. If if you're going to want to do some serious overlanding, I recommend a hybrid tire or yep. or a mud terrain. Right, like like we deal with some sticky clay here it's in nasty. Virginia, and like. Red clay is no joke. You know, as much as I love the Wild Peak AT3, it's it's a great tire. Clay is going to it doesn't that shed that up. clay Mm-mm. well enough. But at the same time, going to a full you know extreme mud terrain like like the like a Mickey Thompson MTZ, like you're going to get that highway drone. You're going to get the drone. It's not going to wear well. So you know there's a balance. Like that's that's something that requires some thought. Yep. You know you can't just go on on, on tire rack and go. Oh, I want to go off roading, off road. Yep, that's the tire I want. Yep. Like, and you're, get, get I think that's the key with any budget minded person, right? Is that you have to put the thought into it. Like, you sure. can't claim to try and set a budget or yeah. be on a budget and then just buy the first thing that you see yeah. because, right. in our experience, when we meet people like that, they end up spending more money down the road yes. because they go, 100%. I hate this and I need to replace yeah. it. And they end up replacing it before the life is yes. up or anything like that. Yeah, so. do, do, do your. Do your homework. research. Yeah. Do your homework. Do your research. T- take the research with a grain of salt because the forums and Facebook, everyone has their opinions. Yep. Gauge the the median of those yeah. opinions because Gap- that's generally where the the market is. Gap- for. Well, that's where I think much- going to your local shop is is crucial, right? Like not relying just on the forums, well, it, but go to the people who do it every single day, whoever that may be. Yeah, and it, and and our benefit, like at the shop, we get to talk to everybody, mm-hmm. right? Like we get to install a set of tires. We sell a ton of the AT three Ws. Because it's a great daily driver tire that also works on... Send, send the check. <laughs> Falcon already does. Yeah, they already do. Uh, not to the podcast, but... No. Uh, maybe, maybe maybe both. We'll maybe figure that out later. Days. They, It's a great daily driver tire. It's snow rated. It's quiet. It wears well. Best it's snow tire there is. Oh, yeah. I had it in my... Uh, yeah, you had it on your truck. Road, yeah, road, yeah, yeah, you had it on your truck for a while. It so my mom has on so the well. and, and that's the feedback we get from people that have mm-hmm. those tires. But those people, right, from our experience... I sell those to people who are telling me maybe we're going to go run Peter's Mill, which is basically a fire road. Yep. Um, you know, Travis is a great example. He's got the good years. He's got mm-hmm. the Duratrax on his Jeep. He bought the Jeep with Duratrax. When they wore out, he said, I really like this tire. I want Duratrax. So against my recommendation, he bought another set of Duratrax. Send the check. <laughs> and now, and and now he's looking at it. He's got half life in those tires, and he's going, "Man, I don't wheel as much as I thought I was going to." Mm-hmm. And now they're wearing, they're yep. they're starting to cup a little bit, and they're making that noise. And he's it's topless season. He put his bikini top on, and now all he hears is tire noise. Yep. Oh yeah, and he and he does a ton of miles, right? Like yep. like he's he drives doing, his jeep every day for work, like a hundred miles yeah. or more. More because and we his do, radio can't turn up we're, high enough. We're, we're doing synthetic oil changes, seventy five hundred miles every other month. Damn, for his Jeep. Yeah. like he's he's putting the miles on it, and and that's fine. But knowing that that's what he was doing with his Jeep, I I told him you should get the Wild Peak or or the Bajas if you want something more aggressive because he does wheel it, right? So like the Baja Boss AT from Mickey Thompson, great hybrid tire. It's it's an aggressive all terrain. It wears well. It's tame on the highway but it also grips because it's got good siping mm-hmm. it will go over the slippery rocks it will shed the mud not as good as a mud terrain but better than your typical all terrain yep and and these are all things you know these are just small snippets of information that you should apply to your build and do the time to do your own research too right so That's... so get the opinions talk to the people online talk to your local club take their information take you know the club's information go to the shop get their recommendation and use that and say this is the closest thing to what i want to do right so you know maybe let's say it comes down to the recommendation that you get is a falcon at3w I'm work, working on it i know <laughs> gonna get smacked the, the, it, it, you're what you're you want that tire or that's the tire that's recommended to you, but it's not in your budget so now you start looking at options that are similar to it mm-hmm. um and there's a bunch out there. Yokohama, the, the Geolander is a, a very well-trusted yep. tire. 
Um, the general grabber has has some good good reviews on it. Um, you know, we we formulate our reviews based on what we we like to sell and what we see um, and what we know works. Yep. It's not that it's the only thing that works. It's just what we know. The feedback that we get right. from customers, yep. from yep. customers put it on and there. friends on the trail. Right. Like, like, well, like the, it's, uh, it's, it's not just the feedback of what we put on the customer's rigs. It's what we're taking off, too. You know, we right. always ask the customer, hey, yeah. how did you like that? What, hey, would these, you use it again? These, these trail grapplers only have 30,000 miles on them. Why are you changing them out? Oh, they're, they're horribly loud. I loved them. They were great off-road, but I don't off-road as much as I used to. Cool. Yeah. Mental note. Trail grappler, great off-road tire, not the best on-road tire. Yep. Super expensive. Yes. Right? Not budget-friendly right at all. They're so, $450 a piece. Yeah. So, uh, the last I checked. Yeah. 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 Um, and, it, and you know, like I had I had super budget tires on Scrap Heap. Yep. They I worked had, really well. I, I, I had I had some, some Kumo mud terrains, mm -hmm. the, like the MT-71. They were super knobby. They were just horrendously not loud. Not street tires. They, like... You know, they, they were soft. Like, they, they definitely wore down quickly. Like, I think that Jeep had, like, maybe, maybe 1,500 miles on yeah. it, and I went through half that tire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, like, now, I, to be fair, that was a strictly off-road vehicle. Oh, you I chew mean, those things up on You're rocks, talking oh, yeah. spinning tires on rocks, spinning tires sure. on trees. Like, But to that point, yeah. they were phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, like they yeah, were, they, they were for days. Right. They were a C-low tire. I, like, I accredit the ability of that Jeep mostly to the fact that it had – Really good tires for the terrain it was being yes. used on. Um, you, well, you could see that that one time you were coming up Pinnacle and you didn't air down. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah. then you aired and down. Then and aired the tires down like, and oh, yeah. The right tires up, like, yeah. yeah, let's do it. Yeah. I had four people in the car, yep. drove it out there, was like, yeah, we're just running the one trail. We don't, we don't need to air down and couldn't get through the first obstacle, which is ridiculous because I've done that obstacle 50 times. <laughs> Let five PSI out of the tires and walks right up it. Yeah. Like, you know, that that tires fall at in for me in the top five of building your rig yep don't skip on tires don't skip on safety gear get something four-wheel drive have friends and that that's that's not even in that's not even on the list because that's like you 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 have to have that yeah everything else is you should have yes yeah so. i mean obviously we didn't uh we didn't focus so much on the vehicle aspect of it in this episode, but hopefully we you did. guys got some. Yeah, we got, we got yeah, some. Yeah, but I just mean more, not, Tom, not like the last, was, where last, well, last well, episode was yeah. pick, pick your vehicle, you know, no matter the price. This, you know, I think when we talk about budget-friendly stuff, it, you know, we try to encompass as much as we can yeah. when I think, you're talking I think about the, budget. So. I think the choosing a vehicle takeaway is you can choose whatever you want. Yes. I don't, I, like, like, we can sit here and make a recommendation all day, but we all know what the used car market is right now. It's it's bananas. Yes, you're going to absolutely. drive whatever you have in your driveway already. Right. Yeah, and you're going to outfit it with a set of decent tires, right. recovery equipment. Yeah, and, if, and yeah. Your, your camping stuff. If, if if you know, like we 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 have friends who have a Durango. It's all wheel drive. It's a full size SUV. They got a non off road package, so it's got 20 inch wheels, street tires, and and valances. Did they rip a valance off? Yeah, <laughs> driving it down the beach. Right? Could that have been avoided? Yeah. But you can use whatever you have or whatever you can get your hands on. Mm -hmm. You just – you run that risk. Do you rip the valance off? Do you get some scratches? Do you ding up a wheel? Maybe you ding up a wheel and go, ah, man, maybe I should get rid of these 20s, get some 17s, yeah. and, and get some more sidewall. Like, you know, that's all part of that evolution. But there's there's no right or wrong vehicle. It just no. There's there's better or worse. Yes. Or there's, there's accommodations that you have to provide to a vehicle that's not as – capable out out of the box yeah and and i think you know we we hit on the ones that i think are are very capable out of the yes. box obviously the the jeeps right yeah. even the grand cherokees the cherokees the compasses the renegades out of the box anything with a trailhawk badge or any of the wrangler families can do so much more than you think that's amazing and if you want to do more add tires and recovery gear and you're done yep like you could take your stock sport wrangler throw a set of decent tires on it without a lift kit, right? You can keep your, what is it, 265, yeah, 55, whatever. 17s that come on the sports now. You can get those. You can get an AT3W in that in that size. Yep. You throw that tire on that Jeep, It'll put the top everywhere. down, throw a cooler in the back, bring some firewood, bring a camp stove, whatever it is. You're overlanding. You're out and there. You're, and you're overlanding. Yep. 
but yeah, I mean, uh, hopefully, hopefully everyone got enough of that info in this one. You know, it's we yeah, tried to tried to focus on everything that you would need, and like yeah. I mean, need not just want. But uh, like obviously, if you guys have any questions or anything, feel free to reach okay. out to us. You know, we'll definitely go into more depth if you want. Um, reach out to us on all the social media platforms: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Dirt Drive Podcast. And uh, next time, we're going to focus a little bit more on actual rock crawling and what it takes to get into that and the vehicles that you should focus on there. And uh, hopefully you guys tune in next time. All right, guys. See you later.